Welcome to today's Pilates class. Um, let's get started. I want you to start with your feet nice and wide and sort of what would be in second position or a wide plie. Turn those toes slightly out to the sides and just drop and lift. Start nice and soft. You just want to kind of get the synovial fluid flowing through those joints. You want to get them warming up and the blood pumping and any little crack cracking and popping to stop for four, three. The only change is you're going to drop and lift and breathe through that. Inhale and exhale. Same thing. You just want to get that body moving. Get the blood pumping. Two. Good. Sink low and hold for just one second. I want you to drop down into that, and whenever you come up, you're going to push off, circle one leg and drop down into it. Give me a second drop in the center. Circle. Stop. Drop. Circle. Stop. Drop. Circle. So give yourself that chance to really drop low and push off. Hold. Drop low and push off. Lots of options for the hands. You can grab onto something for balance if you like. You can place them on your hips. Or you can start to shoot them overhead. For four. Three. Two more. Really roll through those hips. Warm them up. And one. Just walk those feet in. Stepping just slightly wider than your hips. Parallel like you're on snow skis. Sit down into that. Feel like you're in kind of an athletic stance. That idea of like a football player would be in. In that position, press your hands forward, palms up, open them to the side. Pull your belly button into your spine. Drop your tailbone down to the floor and twist a little bitty just through those core muscles. So through your back and your abs, drive your heels in. Keep your knees tracking over your toes. Don't let them start to collapse in. Squeeze with your belly button. And a little bitty. Twist and twist. Just warming up through those abs and back. If you feel like your belly button is starting to drop forward and out, pull it in and back towards your spine. Keep that breathing nice and even. Inhale and exhale. For four. Three. Two right there. Walk the feet in even closer. This time you're standing in what in yoga would be mountain pose. Drop your heels down. Lift your hands up. Maybe even interlace your fingers overhead. Drop to one side and come back up. Drop and lift. First side and then back to the other side. Drop. Squeeze with those obliques, the little muscles along your side, from the bottom of your rib cage down towards your hips, so that they stretch and squeeze each time. Four, three. You have two little sets. Feel like you're pressing your tailbone down to the floor and pulling your belly button into your spine. Last one. And then step back to that wide, wide, wide stance with your toes slightly out to the side. Then down into that. Just slowly shift your weight from side to side. As you do so, lengthen those arms out. And then bend in the elbow, start to reach. Did it stop? And reach. Good. If you would prefer, you can start to straighten the legs. And so now it becomes this shift without that bend in the knee, pushing through the hips, feeling that stretch, or add those pendle arms. Four, three, last two sets. Last one and walk it all the way in and up. Good, this time standing back in that sort of athletic stance, slightly wider than your hips. Teeny soft bend in those knees. Hands are behind your head. I just want you to start with a little tilt side to side. Drop the elbow like you're between two panes of glass. And so you want to really stay upright and not go too far forward. And think about that drop. 
Through again those obliques, side muscles, rib cage to hips. Good. When you feel ready, you can lift the knee and lift. Keep a soft bend in that supporting leg. Press and press. Again, resisting that temptation to sort of go forward. And if you feel like you have the hip mobility to pull that knee straight out to the side, start to pull it straight out to the side. You have four, three, just two little sets. Breathe through that. Pull the belly button in and back. Keep it tight. And one. Good. Right there, I want you to sink down like we did at the very beginning. And just give me that lift. Little recovery. Two. Add those sort of sumo knees. And pull. Drop. And pull. Three sets. Kind of running through those. Two sets. One more each seven. Drop. Walk those feet in. Good. This time in that mountain pose, I want you to pin both arms. Reach one as high as you can, one as low as you can. And lift. Reach. Reach and lift. Walk your feet in super duper close. As close as you can, keeping your balance. Drive your heels into the floor. Feel like your tailbone and your bottom are sort of going down towards the floor instead of back towards the wall behind you. Pull that belly button into your spine. And give me a teeny tiny kegel squeeze. That little, I'm on a road trip. There's not a bathroom for about 500 miles. That little squeeze right there. Two more on each side. And reach. Last one on each side. Good, right there, just C curl forward. Roll and stack that spine all the way up. Three like that, little C curl forward. Roll and stand up, reach as tall as you can. C curl forward. Roll to stand up. C curl forward. And up. Step slightly wider. Sit a little bit lower, still basically an athletic stance. Hands forward, back to the twist, side to side. Seven sets. Six, pull your belly button into your spine. Drop your tailbone down. Four sets to go. Breathe through it. Give me one more. All the way down, step it all the way in, lift up. Interlace the fingers, drop side to side. Three, two more. Last one, each side, beautiful. If you have a loop, I would like you to go ahead and grab that loop. If you do not, you can grab hand weights or a towel to create some resistance, or you can use your own imaginary resistance and just really tighten those muscles. Place one palm up in the loop, and one palm down. Step slightly wider than you were in that athletic stance, but same thing, sort of sit back, almost like a little sumo wrestler. You're gonna bicep curl on one side, tricep press on the other, and down. So as you start, you can start with just a little bit of a press and a release, and you can start working towards what I sort of call that beauty queen sash where you reach one palm towards the shoulder and the other towards the opposite thigh. Press and release. Just give me four full presses. Three. A lot of that's gonna depend on the resistance in your band and how far you can get it. Hold it out. Four, three. Your pulse is to start to release, but don't quite. Six, five, four, Almost there, two, one. Stay low on those legs, just rotate those hands. Opposite hand, palm up, palm down. Just pull and release to start. So it's just that feeling of bicep curl, tricep press, release. Same time. 
And again, just depending on your loop, you might start working just a little bit more cross body to really pull shoulder to thigh, shoulder to thigh. Four, three, you got this. Please hold for me right there. Four, three, two. Little pulses almost start to release. For four, three, two. One, bring that in, walk it all the way up. Good. I want you to step into a lunge for me. And if you have this loop, place it around your foot. If not, you can grab something heavy, or if you would prefer, you can grab nothing at all. So one foot away forward, one foot back, very traditional lunge, back heel is lifted, sink down, like you're gonna tap this back knee on the floor, but don't quite go that low. Grab that loop if you're using it, or your weight with the opposite hand from the front leg, same hand as the back leg. As you go down, curl, as you come up, release. Curl and release, curl, and curl. Four right there. Four. Keep your shoulders stacked over your hips as much as you can. Take this one down. Hold. So if you have weights, just hold it in a 90 degree angle, like you're holding a tray of something super heavy for me. If you're holding this loop, just resist against it. Three, two, and then wherever you are, a little press with a hand. Seven, six, we're almost there. Four, three, two, one, release and come up. We're just gonna directly switch over to the other side. Place it around what will now be the front foot. Shoot that opposite leg back. Very traditional lunge. Grab onto the loop or weights, palm up for me. And as you go down into the lunge, pull into the bicep curl and come up. Pull and up. A little pull. Give me four right there. Curl and release. Three. Stack your shoulders over your hip. Belly button in towards the spine. Hold, hold, hold. Same thing even if you have hand weights or even if you have nothing. Just imagine there's a heavy tray and you're pushing up against that. Two. One. Little bit serve. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and in and up. Release that loop. Good. Coming all the way down on the mat for me. Keep that loop nearby. Go ahead and set it down on the floor. Start with inhale your arms up. Exhale, belly button in towards the spine. And you're going for a super C curl in that spine. Really trying to think about one little vertebrae at a time, rolling all the way down. Inhale your arms up overhead. Exhale down by your side. Tuck your chin into your chest. Think about that C curl. So as you start to lift your head and shoulders, feel like you're sort of dropping the center of your body heavy towards the floor and almost tucking or lifting your bottom and making it light on the mat. Right there, I want you to reach for one heel and the other. Reach and reach. Just a teeny tiny shift side to side. So still feel like you're pushing your feet super heavy into the floor, making those hips or your bottom super light on the mat. Good. And really lift. Pull in and down through the abdomen. Four, three, Two, one more each side. Good, lengthen those legs out. Inhale, lower the head and shoulders. Reach as far overhead as you can. Tuck your chin into your chest and start to roll up. If you get stuck to start with, I want you to give me a little bend of the knees. Go ahead and grab your legs. Pull yourself all the way up to seated. If you have that loop and you're choosing to use it for this move, you can wrap it around your forearms, lower than where a wrist watch would be if you are wearing one. Tuck your chin into your chest. Start rolling back and down. Inhale your arms overhead. 
Now, obviously, this is going to take that grabbing on the legs out of it. So you're going to tuck your chin into your chest, start to roll up. Again, if you get to that kind of sort of stuck position, then you stay right there for a full breath. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale as you lower your head and shoulders. Lengthen back. Exhale, roll up. Hold for a full breath cycle. Just inhale. And exhale. Stay there. Squeeze that belly button. Do that kegel squeeze. Lower on the inhale. Full stretch. And exhale. Start to roll up. If you are coming all the way up to seated, super. Lengthen out on the inhale. Roll back on the exhale. Inhale on that stretch. Exhale on the roll up. So really think about your breathing, going with it whichever move you're doing. So at the top end, there's an inhale. On the movement, there's an exhale. On the bottom end, there's an inhale. And again, on the movement is that exhale. And if you would like to add on, as you roll back and down, you can just open the arms slightly overhead like a Y and roll up and lengthen out. Or when you come back, instead of hitting the floor, you can stop at that sort of halfway position, lengthen the arms, open towards a Y, release, bring the arms in and roll up. So it's sort of that hovered roll back. You roll back before you touch the floor, you stop. The arms finish the roll back. Open out, release, bring them forward. And look, just two more like that. Half roll back, or full, or you're hovering and holding halfway. You pick your position because it's not a competition. It's just about you getting stronger each time that you work on these things. And so there's not a right or a wrong place to go. It's just that you started and that you kept moving. And wherever you are, release that loop and roll yourself all the way back and down. So if you were already doing half up, just come flat on the floor. Good. Bending your knees to bring them in towards your chest. I want you to take that loop and go ahead and place it around your calves for me. Right there, I want you to press your palms and forearms into the mat and just try to lift those hips a little bit up off the mat. So just any little pop of the hips up off the mat, it's a perfect little lift and lower. For three, two, good. Now we're gonna work on a rollover. So you've got a lot of options here. If you're feeling super strong today, and your legs are being agreeable and they decided to help you with that rollover, then you just do a very traditional rollover. Super control and come back down. Maybe you're just sort of popping up and so you're gonna place your hands underneath those hips and let them help you lift. And as much as you can control without the hands, roll back down. Just be sure you're not plopping back down. Just give me about two more right there. And roll down. One more, roll over, and roll down, three, two. Bend those knees in. If you're using the loop, move it all the way up around your thighs for me, and then bend your knees and place your feet flat on the floor. Good. Working on bridge in a couple of different ways today. We're gonna start by just tucking your hips under and lifting up into what I like to call a Pilates bridge. So a yoga bridge goes super high and there's a big stretch up here in the front of your body. And then this Pilates bridge stays nice and low where you can barely get your hands underneath between your bottom and the floor. And you're hovering in the hamstrings, the back of the thighs just really starts to grip in for you. Good. In that position, I want you to rock your hips under and back, under and back. Teeny tiny tilt of the hips and release, tilt and release. Give me four like that. Three, two. Good, roll the hips all the way down. Step your feet as wide as your towel or mat. 
or slightly wider than your hips. Now press your knees open so that they're really tracking with your toes and your feet, not staying in towards your hips, and then tuck those hips under, same thing, slight hover. So just start with that hold for four, keep it nice and close to the floor, three, don't lift too high, two, teeny tiny tilt and release, tuck the hips and release. So there's sort of two things that really get accomplished in this little tuck. You create that mobility through the lower back of simply tucking through the spine. You also create that strengthening on the back of the thighs all the way up through your glutes. Two more. One more. Hold, hold, hold. It's super wide. I want you to put as much weight as you can into one foot and just try to barely lift the other foot. Now your legs should be wide enough, and most especially if you have that loop one kind of pulling them in, that there's this super fight. So every time you come back down, I want you to take your foot and kind of search for the edge of the mat. Lift, and kind of find that really wide spot over the side. And switch, give me two more sets. Little monster march, and lower. Lift, and lower. Two more there. Now walk those feet out if they start to come in. Press your knees nice and wide for me so they're really tracking with your feet. Keep your bottom super close to the floor and give me the teeniest little pulse. So this, instead of that sort of tucking of the hips and working through the spine, your spine's staying pretty still in this one and it's much more of a lift of the entire pelvic joint so that you're pressing through those knees and through the quads and through the hamstrings all the way through those legs. Four, three, two, one, super gentle, set it down, walk those feet in and pull your knees in towards your chest, nice. Go ahead and take that loop and place it around your feet for me. Good, working on what is a single leg stretch, so if you don't have the loop, same move. Press one foot out as far as your loop is going to allow, and again, it's gonna depend on the resistance that you've chosen to use today, so you might be in here for your single leg stretch, or you might be way out here. Wherever you are, lift your head and shoulders, look down at that leg. If at any point this bothers your neck, simply lower your head and shoulders and just keep the legs. And switch, pulse for two, pulse. That's one set, pulse for two, and pulse. As you're doing this, imagine I take a big, heavy weighted plate and I set it on your belly button, and it's sort of forced your lower back and your abdomen to kind of sink down towards the floor. And pull. Remember that Kegel we were talking about at the beginning of class? You're still doing that, right? So you've got that super squeeze internally. Double pulse. Double pulse. One more each side. Double pulse. Double pulse. And pull those feet in. Move that loop up so that it's around your calves or your shins and right into double leg stretch. Press the feet out, lengthen the arms overhead, and circle and tuck them in. Again, if your neck isn't liking that, you can reach out right here and circle and tuck in. If your back starts to arch up and your belly button is pushing up like a little loaf of bread rising, reach your feet and your hands a little higher towards the ceiling. Just remember wherever you're pushing that abdominal out to is sort of where you're training it. So when we do tons of crunches and we kind of shh, 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 and we're just pushing it up, 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 we're sort of training it to stick out. And after about age three, most of us don't really want our belly button to be out there because it's not near as cute anymore. Two more right there. Circle and stretch. Last one. Circle and stretch with those knees in, lower your head and shoulders. Move that loop all the way back down around your thighs for me. Okay, one leg presses away. Don't push so far that your loop is gonna start to roll up and down your thighs and make sort of a helicopter propeller move. So your legs are gonna go in your scissor way out to the side and way back in. Sort of like one of those little protractors that you used in math so you could draw that perfect circle our compass and circle clearly not teaching elementary school math and circle remember you can raise your head and start 
shoulders and reach for it and grab your leg each time or just reach as far past your hips as your body will allow. Give me four little switches here. Three. Pull the belly button in and down. Push the lower back heavy into the floor. Last one each direction. And good. Leave that loop around your thighs. If you prefer for your head and shoulders to be lowered and or for your hands to be underneath your hips to help you press everything in and down, go ahead and modify it. Those hands underneath your hips. Double leg lower. And then lift right back up. If you would rather, you can raise your head and shoulders. Look down at that double leg lower. And lift right back up. You can place the hands on either side of your hips. Double leg lower. You can change the range of motion. You can double leg lower just till it gets tight. And lift right back up. You can reach those hands over your chest. Or you can add a little V on the legs. So as you double leg lower, a little bitty open and squeeze, release. Wherever you are, give me two more. Double leg lower, double leg lift. Last one, double leg lower, double leg lift, and knees in towards your chest, nice. Go ahead and leave that leg right there on your thighs for me and roll yourself right over onto your side. Good, I super duper like for you to cradle your head so that you keep the integrity of the line of your spine from the top of your head through your tailbone. So move your knees down so that if your feet were bent, they would be shooting straight back at the wall behind you. But then go ahead and straighten them out so you're in the straightest line possible from your heels through your shoulder. Right there, it's just a little bitty leg lift. And then lower, lift. So sort of feel like those hips are stacked, like you're a carousel horse and there's just that little post going right through that hip. If you feel like you're slightly rocking too much forward or back, you can place one hand on the mat in front of you, or you could even lift both feet and just bring them to that front corner of your mat. Last two, wherever you are. Lift up and hold, and give me a little bitty, bitty kicks, forward, hold, back, stop and hold. Forward, squeeze back, teeny tiny, press forward, think about the hips not moving, think about the abdominals being tight, one more, and then just flex the foot, same little kicks, forward, press the heel back, do not let your hip rock back when you go forward, and don't let your hip rock forward when your heel goes back, that's counterbalancing, two more, Squeeze with all those muscles. Make the kick smaller if you need. One more. Hold right there. Point the toes for eight little circles. Six. Four. Flex the foot for eight little circles. Back. Four. Two. Good, now point the toe, teeny tiny pulse lift. The smaller you make this lift and lower, the more you're actually going to feel it. The bigger you make it, the more it becomes momentum and the less muscle you actually end up using. Flex the foot, little bitty pulses. For four, three, two, Set that foot down, bend your knees in so that your knees are basically up in front of your belly button. Good, option one, this knee stays bent. Option two, the leg goes straight. Lift and lower, lift and lower. Six, five, press that heel as far forward as you can. Press your hand as far forward as you can so instead of leaning back, you're leaning forward and getting right out here in this outside part of the hip. Two, hold, flex the foot, little circles. Seven, six, five, four, three. Point the toe, teeny tiny circles and reverse it. Go the opposite direction. 
You can do this, don't give up. Stay as high as you can, stay as far forward as you can, keep the toes pointed, little bitty pulses. So small, it just almost doesn't even look like your leg is moving at all. And then flex the foot, teeny tiny pulses. Almost there, four, three, two, and one, bend the knee in. Open your arms out to a T and just look out at the wall behind you. Try and stack those knees one on top of the other. Try to super duper press that hip forward. Deep breath. Bring the hands in and just press yourself all the way up and over for the other side. Good. So again, kind of help yourself find that you're lined up in a straight line. You can kind of use the back of your mat as a ruler and be sure that your shoulder, your hip, your knee, and then your heels are on it. And just as I said before, if you feel like you're kind of wobbling and not quite able to hold it, no problem. Just bring those feet forward to the front corner of the mat and or place your hand on the mat in front of you. A little bit of lift and lower, lift. Go ahead and point the toes on these first little lifts and just squeeze with this outside part of the hip. Three more right there. Two. Now with that pointed toe, lift up. Give me a little kick forward and a little kick back. So there should be a super squeeze to the abdominal wall, the backs, and even your hip joints to keep you balanced with your hips stacked on one side to swing forward and back. So it's not just about kicking your leg. It's really about squeezing everything and super finding this balance and not using your hip weight to balance you. So flex the foot, kick forward. So when I say using that hip weight, flex, push forward, squeeze with the back of the leg back. It's when you sort of rotate the hip back when you go forward and rotate the hip forward when you go back. Try to really keep that hip still. Last one, forward. Back, keep that flexed foot and give me teeny circles right there. Seven, six, five, four. Breathe through it. Point the toes, circle the opposite direction. Now if this side starts to get tired a little bit faster, three, two, pointed toes, little pulse lifts. Remember these are so small. It's because it was this side was pushing down on the other side to stabilize you. So it should get tired faster, but you've got to push through. You want to be even, flex the foot, still pulsing. Inhale and exhale. Two and one, good. Bend those knees in, bring them right up in front of your belly button for me. Remember, you can do this whole thing with just the kneecap being the one making the circles and the pulsing. Bent knee or straighten the leg, your choice. So point those toes and lift and lower. Seven, six, Good, maybe reach this top hand forward. Maybe push your foot out a little bit so that you're staying so forward and not kind of falling into this lean back position. You really want the outside of the hip to warm up. And lift and hold. Give me those small circles. Seven, six, four. Just flex the foot, circle the other direction. Reverse the circle. Keep it up close in front of you. If you reach for it, four, three, little pulses. Just count to four and you're there. Point the toe, four, three, two, and one. Stack the knees, really push this knee forward for me and then just open your arms out to a T. Letting your shoulder blades both drop towards the floor. A little stretch through your mid-back and through that hip. Beautiful. Bringing yourself all the way up so that you can take that loop off of your legs for just a second. Good. Seated in sort of an L position, just meaning that you are sit seated as tall as possible, making the straightest line possible with your spine. And then you're gonna grab one knee and just pull it in nice and close. 
I want you to take this opposite foot and kind of rotate it out to the side, dropping your pinky toe down to the floor. And then imagine you just have a little teacup or something balanced right here on the inside part of your heel. My Pilates ladies, I can already hear you groaning because you groan every time we do this. Sit as tall as you can, pull yourself as close to this leg as you can. Your tendency is gonna to be to turtle back here to make it easier. I am not a fan of easy. So sit up super tall, lift with the heel, lower to the floor. Now, often I am told whenever I do this with my classes, I, there is no way that my leg is ever going to come up there. So if I say lift your heel and your inner thigh gets tight right there, you're done. Squeeze and release. If you can on the next floor, four, lift and hover. Lift and hover. Two more, hover. One more and just static hold. Four, can you hold it a little higher? Three. Sit up taller, lean towards that foot, and release it down. Good. If you did make a slight groaning noise and someone in your house is making fun of you, maybe you should tell them to come join you for the next set. So pull the opposite knee in. Super deeper, turn that foot out. It's like you're trying to get your pinky toe to touch the floor and you're imagining something is balanced right there. So you already have that super squeeze up here in the hip joint to turn the leg out. Grab that knee and sit up just as tall as you can so that you don't start to turtle back into this. Good, right there. Lift and lower. Lift. Same thing I said on the other side. If you squeeze and it gets light on the floor and you're like, I have never done these before, this is the craziest move ever. It's that inner thigh that's really hard for us to get into. See if you can hover and not quite touch the floor on the next floor. But it should be really, really difficult. And it's sort of my job to make it look really, really easy. Because if I was grunting through it, you probably wouldn't even try, would you? Good. Lift and hold, just static hold. Four, a little higher, three, maybe reach for it, two, and one. A little better if I stretch, just placing the bottoms of the feet together, opening those knees wide. And leaning forward just a little bit, maybe even pressing into those inner thighs or knees so you get a nice little stretch there. Good. Working on rolling like a ball and then sort of moving that directly into a modified teaser position. I want you to lift your feet up so when you roll like a ball, the goal is that your feet never touch. They're not your kickstand. It's everything in this core muscle group that's going to roll you back and stop you. So really tuck that chin in so that your roll is nice and smooth and come right back up to balance. Scoop the belly button into the spine. Try to take that little spot where if you have a flat back, you can plop and then get stuck out of it and instead really scoop. Think about tucking your hips, pulling your chin in towards your chest and creating that little C curl. And back, last one. On this one, I want you to roll back. Stay down on the floor for me, nice and smooth, very controlled. Pull those knees in, go ahead and press your feet into that loop. If you're not using a loop, you might want to go ahead and grab a towel or something to wrap around your feet, just to help you to get up on these first few. So pushing your feet into that, pulling nice and tight with your arms. Press your feet away. And when your back just comes a little way off the floor, not so high that your abdominals release and it's comfortable, but far enough back that you're kind of in this boat or V-sit, hold that position. And then just how we were trying to be super smooth when we were rolling like a ball, use that same sense of seat curling, pulling those knees in and setting it all the way down. Good, so push into whatever you have, come to any sort of balanced lifted position you can find, and just hold for two full breath cycles. Breathe through it. Do that little Kegel squeeze. Really work those abdominal knees in, super gentle, and roll down. If you would rather, 
You can just spread those feet wide enough that the loop is going to stay on your feet for you. Take your hands off of the loop or towel. Push those legs out. Let this push. That movement of those legs kind of help pull you up. Same thing. Reach for that little bent knee or V-sit position. Breathe through it. Hold, hold, hold. And when we come in, super gentle, super slow, super controlled. Remember, there's no plopping in Pilates. Press those legs out. Use the way the legs to pick you up. Remember, staying right here, grabbing your legs, holding those towels. Those are all great positions to be in. Anything between there and here. For four, three, two, Bring it in. If you have stopped holding on to that towel or loop, grab it one more time for me because we're going to work from the top half. So we're going to press in and roll yourself up. So if you're right here with those bent knees, it's just a little bitty lean back, look towards the ceiling, and come back in. Super slow and controlled, lean back. If your legs are straight, same idea. Press the legs down. Scoop to lift higher. Press the legs down. Same thing if you're deciding not to use the loop or towel and in or hands overhead. Lean back, hold. Scoop, lift higher. Two more. Lean back, hold. Scoop, lift higher. Last one, you got this. Lean back, hold. Scoop, lift, and knees in. Beautiful. All the way around. I want you to take that loop and place it up around your calves for me. And once you have done that, you're going to take one foot and place that foot in the loop. And then lead the loop around the shin on the opposite leg. Good. Find a really nice tabletop position. That means your wrists are under your shoulders. You push the floor away from you and kind of puffed up through your back so you're not sunk down in that table position. Put all the weight in that bottom leg and lift the leg with the loop on the foot for me. Teeny tiny, press the heel to the ceiling. Start to drop and stop. Press the heel to the ceiling. Now imagine I was about to take a picture of you doing this. And so you really want to pull your belly button into your spine and press your lower back up to the ceiling. Nice flat back, nice flat abs, even though they're hanging towards the floor. Four right there. Three. You can do this, we're almost there. Two. Hold it up, those itty bitty pulses, so small. Like one of your kids walks in the room right now and says, are you even doing anything? What are you doing? Why are you holding still? Four, three, two, one, and bring that in. Switch right over the other side. So again, I think the easiest way to do this is to start with it on your calves and then move it to the opposite foot. Good, lift that up so that your heel is pressing towards the ceiling. Push the floor away from you, lift your back and your abs. And it's just like you're gonna tap your heel on the ceiling and release. Tap and release. Scoop your belly button in towards your spine. Again, imagine I was about to take a picture of you. Where would you want those abs to be right now? Four, start to release and stop. Three, not very big movement. Two, after all this bridge work, your hamstrings should warm up really fast for me. Little bit of pulses for eight. Four, three, two, and one. Release that and bring that in. Sit all the way back into child's pose. Just regularly throwing stuff back and forth around here. Reach your hands forward. Chin in towards your chest, a little bitty stretch. Good. Hopefully you already took that loop off of your legs. If not, do so. Place it around your forearms. Last little move, tricep push-up. This loop is just going to help you to keep your arms in line. 
Whenever you come into your push-up position, the crease of your elbow is going to be towards the wall in front of you. And when you bend your elbows, it's going to go straight back towards your rib cage. So walk your hands out and then shift your weight forward over those wrists and drop your hips. So it's almost like you're tucking your pelvic bone towards the floor, but you're lifting your lower back towards the ceiling. And if possible, lift those toes so that you get the weight off of your kneecaps, but on that little bottom part of your thighs right before your knees. Lower, slow, lift, up. Three like that, lower, slow, press, up. So a lot of times whenever we do a move, and we rush through it, lift. Slow, we lose some of the muscle movement because we start using momentum, which is super when you're moving fast in a cardio class, but not so super when you're going for strength. Drop halfway and hold four, three, two little pulses, eight, seven, six, five, lower butt into the spine, lift the lower back, two, one, Lower and hover right over the floor, right against that loop. Don't touch the floor, you're hovering. All the way down. And press up and back last time for your child's pose. Beautiful job. You can just move that loop out of the way. Good, after one nice deep breath in that child's pose, go ahead and swing your legs around for me for today's stretch. Pulling one knee into your chest, pull yourself all the way back and down onto the floor. Pull both knees into your chest. Just let your knees rock side to side, letting the weight of your legs kind of massage your lower back into the floor. Or you can stir them in a little bit of a circle. Just kind of depends on what's gonna feel best for your lower back. If you do stir them in a circle, just do three or four in one direction, and then switch and do three or four the other way. Good, right there, lengthen your hands and legs to the ceiling. And circle both your hands and your feet so that your wrist and your ankles get just a little bit of a stretch and break. And then again, after three or four, just circle them in the other direction. Good. A lot of times I tell you to leave your hips on the floor for this stretch, but we're really working towards plow today. So anywhere from right here where you start to bring your legs towards you and your hips start to roll up, anything in between that and lifting yourself all the way up into a very traditional yoga plow position where you're reaching your feet towards the floor behind you. Maybe you even interlace your hands at your low back and push with your hips and breathe through that for four. Remember that isn't necessary. You can be right here for three, two, and one, everyone bring those hips back down to the floor. Give me a slight bend in your knees. Grabbing on behind your thighs, on your shins or calves, or maybe even onto the bottom of your feet. Go into that little happy baby or dead bug yoga pose. We are pressing your knees down towards the floor and pressing open wide through those hips and inner thighs. If it feels better for your body, you even have that option of slightly rocking side to side. For a little bit of stretch. Good. One more deep breath there. And then release that, bringing those knees in. Grabbing both knees or one knee. Roll yourself all the way up to seated. And lengthen out. Good. Pressing those legs straight forward in front of you for a forward fold. Just start walking your hands out on either side of those legs. Use the traction of the floor. Grab your little loop or your towel and wrap it around your feet and grab onto it. Or maybe you even just grab onto your feet and give a little tug and pull yourself forward into that little L forward fold. And roll that back all the way up. Good, lifting your right arm up overhead. Get as tall and long as you can, driving that right hip down into the floor before you start to lean slightly to the side. So feel like you're driving the hip down as you lean to the side. And come back up and switch for me, left hand up overhead. Really lengthen, really drive that left hip in before you lean to the side, long stretch through those obliques. And right back up. 
good. Going into a straddle stretch, opening your legs wherever your body is going to go comfortably. Again, it is not a competition. Lengthen those arms out. Lean over to one side. Maybe look up into the top elbow. The reason I like to say that is I like for you to really keep it a purely side stretch instead of starting kind of curl forward. So really look towards the ceiling. And then switch sides and lean to the other side. This bottom arm, it doesn't matter if it goes in front of the leg, behind the leg, on the leg, whatever works for you in your little side stretch. Good, and then walking your hands forward just into that little straddle stretch. And whenever you get as far forward as your body's going to allow, just a deep breath right there. Inhale. And exhale. Feel like you just sort of melt a little further down into that stretch. And then on your next exhale, walking your hands right back in. Good, bring your legs forward into either an easy seated stretch or a little pretzel. Completely up to you and where your body wants to go today for a little stretch. Same thing, bring your hands slightly in front of your legs and just lay forward over those legs for one deep breath. Good, grabbing onto the front knee or the top knee, pull yourself into a little back twist. And release and switch. So either place the opposite foot in front or place the opposite foot on knee on top, hands in front of the legs, teeny tiny lean forward for one deep breath. And exhale, just sort of melt down into that. Good, same thing, grab the front knee or the top leg, which should have you twisting in the opposite direction this time. A little bitty back twist. And release and swing those legs all the way around for me into a little tabletop position. Give me two cat and cow. So when you come into cat, feel like you sort of tuck your hips as far under as you can. Really tuck your chin in towards your chest and lift through that back. Nice spine stretch. When you come into cow blow, all the, our inhale as deep as you can, dropping your rib cage. Feel like you're looking as high as you can towards the ceiling. One more time. Exhale in cat. Inhale in cow. And then find a nice flat back for me. Tuck your toes and lift right up into that downward facing dog stretch. Remember, this is an active stretch. You're driving your heels down towards the floor as much as you can. Lift your tailbone up towards the ceiling. Good. Bending your knees as much as you need. So you can walk your hands in towards your feet or your feet in towards your hands, up to you. Hang in that little forward fold, shake your head yes, releasing all the tension in your neck. And right there, really big and dramatic like a toddler, shake your head no, chin as far over your shoulders as you can go. And then just bring your head to a stop, release your neck. Release your hands, hang a little heavier towards the floor. And on your next exhale, kind of pull that belly button into your spine, protect your lower back as you start rolling all the way up to standing. Nice. One deep inhale. Exhale down, interlace your hands behind your back for me. Pull your shoulders down away from your ear. Drop one ear to one shoulder. Lift up and over your other ear to the shoulder. Good. Chin to the chest. Pull your hands down to the floor. Pull your shoulders down like you're tucking your shoulder blades into your back pockets. And really stretch through the back of that neck for me. And release two deep breaths. Inhale up. On the exhale, feel like you reach as far to the side as you can. One more time. Inhale up. This time, imagine you're dragging your fingertips against the wall behind you, open through your chest. And release down, beautiful job. Thank you so much for joining to me. Joining me today, I always appreciate that you guys watch these. Um, as always, if you like it, let me know so I know to make more like this. 
If there's something that you would rather see, please let me know that also because I'm doing this for you guys and um, I really appreciate you watching.